There's this old saying I've been coming back to lately. It says, everyone you meet is your teacher. And that feels so social media friendly. Like, if that's not tweetable, I don't know what is. But what makes it so powerful is that there's so much wisdom packed in that little sentence. It's life-altering, paradigm-shifting wisdom. But what if we stretch it a little further? What if we say it like this? Everything you encounter is your teacher. Everything? Everything. What if I told you that your life right now is worth noticing? This is the Attention Collection. I'm Anthony Garcia. Stephen Pressfield is a writer whose words have impacted tons of people, and I count myself as one of them. But when he was in his 20s, Stephen was a writer who couldn't bring himself to write. When he thinks back on that time, here's how he describes it. I crossed the country 13 times in that era, driving my 65 Chevy van for no reason whatsoever except that I was running away from myself and my obligation to do my own work and follow my own calling. Stephen couldn't bring himself to put words on the page, and he was being held back, and he wasn't able to break through that until he gave a name to whatever it was that was holding him back. Here's what he says in his book, The War of Art. There's a secret that real writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is resistance. In his book, resistance is written with a capital R. It's not simply a word. It's not a concept. It's the proper name of an entity. It's a real force that he does battle with, and he claims that all of us do battle with resistance. And when Pressfield gave a name to the voice that told him he wasn't good enough or talented enough or that his ideas were terrible, it's not that the voice disappeared and went away and all of a sudden words just started to flow. It still shows up to this day, and trust me, he's far from his 20s. But now he sees it standing in the corner. Now he can face it, and because of that, he learned from it. So now he knows what to do with resistance. I want you to go with me on this for a second. What if we chose to see every event, every circumstance in life as a teacher? What if we took the Pressfield approach here? and personified everything, even the pain, what would that change? Here's the truth. You don't have to like your teacher. That's not a course requirement. Perhaps the teacher is a real jerk who has no business teaching. So what? Perhaps the teacher is altogether indifferent. Oh well, it's still a teacher. Still has a job to do. If you spend any time listening to interviews with successful business people or thought leaders or people who have achieved things that most of us aspire to, there's a common thread that almost every single one of them come back to, that you learn more from failure than you do from success. There's something to be learned in tragedy. There's something to be learned in unspeakable pain. Yes, I would much rather learn from success I would much rather be able to enjoy the teachers. But what if we actually can learn from failure and mistakes, from good times and bad times, from the blissful relationships and from the heart-wrenching relationships? We can learn from teachers on mountaintops and we can learn from teachers in valleys. If we choose to see it as such, everything is a teacher. Everything has a voice and a lesson to teach. But to see something as a teacher is to personify it, which is interesting, but it's also risky and it's kind of scary. 
But let's give this a specific. Let's get into it. Here's a situation that we all find ourselves in right now. Let's take this scary course we've all been enrolled involuntarily into. This pandemic known as the coronavirus. None of us want to be a part of this right now. It's unsettling. So many people have already been lost and we don't know how many more remain to be lost. And so many of us are living in fear and disorientation. We want to get rid of this and hopefully that will soon be the case. But what if for the time being, we chose to see that class is now in session and that this situation is our teacher? What do we stand to learn? If you listen to last week's episode, I said that one thing we're learning is that normal is an illusion dangling by fishing line. And that despite how we've so often behaved, we are all in this thing together. I think we're also learning empathy in this moment. We're learning to listen to the suffering of other people with ears of compassion rather than ears of indifference. We're learning how much we rely on other people for life as we know it to work. Think about it. Someone has to teach our children. We've always known this, and we've often, at least I'll speak for me, on some level, taken this for granted. Someone has to stock our shelves. Someone has to open places of business. Someone has to maintain the infrastructure that we rely upon. We're learning about our emotions and our fears. We're learning the things that we rely upon for happiness and for peace of mind. And when those things are taken away, what's left? And what really can we and what really should we be clinging to? Is it possible to find peace in unsettling situations? Is it possible to lean into happiness when there's not a lot on the surface to be happy about? We're learning these things. We're learning the hard way that how we treat our planet matters in ways we've previously ignored. And we're also learning to work in a new way. We're learning to work in creative ways. We're relearning the value of face-to-face connection because when it's not possible or when it's harder to have, we seem to appreciate it more. And we're learning that commerce, shock, awe, isn't the most important thing to life. We're also learning, and this might be one of the most important things we're learning in this time, to see each other all over again. We are learning to see each other. And I want to acknowledge that. To the single parent who's had to work multiple jobs to keep the lights on, let alone carve out time to help your children with schoolwork, we see you. To the teacher who works miracles five days a week, engaging the minds of children you don't have to claim responsibility for, and often supplying the necessary tools to do so from your own pockets, we see you. To the restaurant owner, the cook, the server who labors to provide physical and emotional sustenance, to people who often fail to muster a thank you, let alone a worthwhile tip, We see you. To the business owner losing sleep at night right now, watching your dreams dangle in uncertainty, worrying about the people whose financial well-being has been entrusted to your care. We see you. To the medical professional who doesn't have the luxury of social distancing, who is voluntarily putting your life and the lives of your families at risk for the rest of us to be able to breathe easier. We see you. To the spiritual leader who is being called upon to administer hope in these unsettling times, who's working to speak light into a fog of darkness, we see you. To the adult child who's had to lay your parent to rest, 
And to the parent who's had to lay your small child to rest, we see you. To the elderly person trying not to live in fear of every cough and sneeze. To the immunocompromised person relying on the thoughtfulness of strangers for safety, we see you. And to our brothers and sisters all over the world, for whom widespread life-threatening illness is anything but novel, we're sorry it has taken us so long. We're sorry it has taken this moment. But we see you. This isn't a class any of us signed up for. And there will be an opportunity to give this teacher a horrible review in the future, but we're here, so we might as well listen up. We might as well take out our notebooks. We might as well learn to see all over again. Hey friend, I just want you to know I appreciate you. I don't know where you're at right now. I don't know what's going on in your world. If you feel okay or if you feel like you're drowning in uncertainty, I hope this brings you some semblance of hope. And I hope you recognize that you're not alone because we are all in this thing together. And if I haven't connected with you, if we haven't had the chance to meet, I would love to connect with you on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram. And let's stick together until next week.